as the noise around ordinals gets louder and louder, we are going to take a look at who is backing ordinals and where this is all coming from. Welcome back, everyone. Happy New Year. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's right. I'm going to be annoying about this. And for the people who already have subscribed, I appreciate it. I really do. But for new viewers and new listeners, if you appreciate the content, it's really all that I ask is that you like and subscribe. So anyways, let's dive into this because a lot of times, a lot of times when you listen to uh, these arguments, these discussions on Twitter, you know, people oftentimes like to drag you into the nuance, right? The nuance of the technology, right? Like you, you need to understand the feature sets. You, you need to understand um, why these ideas are so big. Now, the reason why a lot of times the people that are selling you this stuff need to talk about the nuance is so that you don't pay attention to the bigger picture. And you don't pay attention to who's funding these narratives because ultimately, ultimately, who is funding those narratives is just, if not more important than the narratives themselves. Anyways, uh, let's dive into it. Lots of lots of great Bitcoiners um, putting out a lot of great information about ordinals. I gathered it up and we are going to dive into this garbage because... So the first few clips that I did about ordinals several months ago in BRC tokens, I, I just harped on why they were bullshit. I didn't even touch who was funding this crap, okay? But now we're going to take a look at who is funding this garbage. And if you don't think that it is an attack on Bitcoin, you're very much mistaken. And I just want to caveat, Bitcoin is supposed to be anti-fragile. So we expect attacks. Okay, there's where I'm not sitting here complaining and being, oh, why are you attacking Bitcoin? No, that, that's not it. What's important is that we expose the information and we make sure that it's a level playing field and that it's transparent because I think that there's a lot of people sitting there that don't know any better that think, yay, they're building on Bitcoin. Yeah, but these are the same dismantlers who tried to destroy and co opt Bitcoin with the BCH fork, and then the subsequent BSV fork. So yeah, it, it's not just innovation and we're building on Bitcoin. These are dismantlers and these are people who actively want to co-opt and destroy it so that they can control it themselves. That's my personal opinion. Anyways, all right, enough with my rants. Let's dive into the story. So the first tweet comes out of Ghost of Maple. And here we go. Udi's team BSV is excited for 2024. And why is he saying that? So there's a lot of people in Bitcoin who may not know this account, the uh, the Coin Easy, or as I like to call him, Coin Sleazy. Um, so yeah, I was introduced to this piece of shit before um, BCH forked off. Um, so this person pretended to be a Bitcoiner for a very long time. Uh, and here we go. What's he saying? Happy New Year. We are going to un Bitcoin once and for all. And you're thinking to yourself, well, Phil, he's trying to help it. You know, he's trying to help Bitcoin out. You know, why, why are you being so toxic and mean? All right. So here we go. He is the uh, CEO of your future ideas. I highly doubt that. Um, Ordinal's wallet. Look at that. And he's, oh, look at that. He's actually, he is the CEO and the creator of Twitch. Now, for the people who don't know who Twitch is, Twitch is an app entirely built around the BSV ecosystem. Okay. There you go. It's not, it's not built around BTC and shady, crappy people like Meltem Demirers shilled, um, shilled Twitch. Not to mention the fact that Meltem was also part of uh, an instrumental in shilling the New York agreement, which essentially helped bring BCH about. So lots of really great Bitcoin players here trying to grow the ecosystem. So already, right? Already, you know that the guy okay, who started Ordinal's wallet is a BSV shill. So right there, right there, you already know that they are not here to build on Bitcoin. They are here to rob Bitcoiners. That's all. Now, a little further diving in, another tweet from the man, Ghost of Maple. He's, he's, he's doing all the research for us on this Ordinal crap. And I do appreciate it because he, he definitely dumps a lot on the Ordinal's shillers. And I appreciate that. I, I find it, uh, <laughs> find it very helpful and funny. These, these people, I'm not talking about uh, Ghost of Maple, I'm talking about the Ordinal Shillers, they can't, they cannot do this without letting out 
their their objectives okay they they see them they cope so deeply all right so here we go uh this is uh the regarded bsv army back to get forked now here we go bitcoin season three will be all about us flexing our power you see how so it's it's so interesting how people make it and groups make it all about themselves right it's about it's about them flexing their power like relax fuck. you're not flexing your power with jpeg stop being an idiot bitcoin is now an ordinals chain nope we are the economically significant nodes. Nope. We pay the miners more than the laser eyes. We now have the power to fork Bitcoin. You always had the power to fork Bitcoin, bud. Fork it away. <laughs> Please do. We are now going to take Bitcoin back with consensus changes. That's right. We're going to make Bitcoin this centralized piece of crap so that we can control and fleece all the noobs anytime we need because we're building a better world. Yeah, these these people are such crap. And this is why I don't waste my time in the nuance of the tech. That's where they want you to get lost. They want you to get lost in the nuance of the tech so that you don't pay attention to the total grifters and scammers that are funding this crap. Okay. Yeah, I know. You, you can see I'm super passionate about this and I can't stop ranting. I apologize. Anyways, here we go. How do we further optimize Bitcoin to be Ordinal's chain? Oh, but wait a second. What In the earlier comment, he just said Bitcoin is now Ordinal's chain. But here... How do they further optimize Bitcoin to be Ordinal's Chain? Well, which one us? Which one is it? Are you Ordinal's Chain or are you not Ordinal's Chain? Nobody knows. It's Schrodinger's Chain. Oh, they're such idiots. Okay, here we go. BIP1559 at Udi Wertmeyer has proposed this hard fork. This fork will this fork will burn fees. Ah, here we go. So so the same shitcoin tricks that aren't working on Ethereum. Let's try doing this on Bitcoin. Making ordinals chain deflationary. Oh, nice. That's awesome. I can't wait to see what monetary policy they're going to have. It's going to be so interesting. And of course, right, we're even going to leave out the fact that it is an affinity scam. And what people don't understand about affinity scams is this. Every single chain that ever came out after Bitcoin is an affinity scam. I know it hurts. It's you, you don't want to believe it. You have this bag of garbage tokens that isn't moving and you want to believe that it's not an affinity scam. But guess what? This digital scarcity, okay, what Bitcoin did can only happen once. And it already happened. So everybody else is an affinity scam, okay? They are pretending to have the same qualities and features as Bitcoin, and they don't, okay? Anyways, point number two, the block size increase, of course. We need more space to optimize Ordinal's chain as a better P2P file sharing server. What? So this is, did, did Bitcoin, did Bitcoin just become Kazaa? Did it, did Bitcoin just become LimeWire? What? Anyways, here we go. Our team is already working on writing the code for the block size increase. Hopefully we can ship it in the coming weeks. 2024 is the year of Ordinal's chain and you will all find out soon. <laughs> I can think so. Oh, that's funny shit. Okay. Shout out to Hodlinoth, the space cat, uh, who actually has been giving me some pretty interesting tweet threads regarding more of the wonderful, wholesome characters behind the Ordinal's push, right? But essentially behind shilling you JPEGs you don't own that don't need to be on Bitcoin. So here we go. Uh, this is a tweet thread from Hodl and Not, a short story about Ordinal's and wide open eyes. Okay, so here we go. This is a picture of Jack Lou, okay, with, you know it, Craig Wright, creator of BSV, and his lawyer, um, I don't remember his name, but Big BSV Shill. Okay, that is the first picture. Next. So, this is the Asia conference, right? And there he is, co-founder Jack Liu of Ord Swap, right? So, bsv -er coming to Bitcoin to shill you crappy JPEGs. For the, for the final piece, for the final piece to this, right? This is the uh, this is the, uh, the the ordinals. They're gonna have some ordinals conference, okay? And right, who do we got? We got Udi, right? You got Eric. I don't know Josh. Um, and of course, right there, you've got Jack, 
who comes from BSV, Jack Lou. Okay, but wait, Phil, that that's just one guy. It, it's not really anything. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Shout out to Greg, Greg Zaj, great memer, uh, part of the meme factory, which does not exist. Anyways, um, he did a good job classifying for us the the different the different investment houses um, that are helping to build out this ecosystem. So here we go, from most to least interesting. Let's dive into each of them. UTXO management. I'm sure that this is, so the fact that BTC, the, the fact that Bitcoin Magazine has been shilling ordinals and supporting it, guys, it's just a coincidence, right? They're just trying to help the ecosystem. They are the sounding board for Bitcoin, okay? So it's not like they're invested in some company called UTXO management and creating this type of ordinal spam. There's a few other players that are part of this that are maybe going to surprise you anyway. So first, Tyler Evans, right? He's co-founder, chief investment officer of UTXO Management, but also co-founder of parent company, BTC Inc., publisher of Bitcoin Magazine. Oh, we are shocked. David Bailey. Wow. But but it's us, David, that are the pieces of crap, right? We're, we're, the, we're, we're the garbage people, you know, that, that call you out. Fucking pathetic, man. Honestly, fucking pathetic. I <laughs> imagine having a platform like that and choosing to grift noobs to keep the lights on. Golf clap, my friend. Golf clap. This is very disappointing. Obviously, very disappointing. Dylan, right? Known Dylan for a really long time. And uh, yeah. So most recently, there was some yielding product uh, that he got involved in as well. I don't remember what it was. I spoke to him about it on Twitter. And he explained to me why it's not a grift and, you know, part of this UTXO management, which let's go see the kind of projects that these guys uh, are funding. In all fairness, there's some good stuff in here. Okay. I, I can at least say that. The, the, in all fairness, there is some good stuff in here. Um, you know, stuff like Open Node, right? That's good stuff. Unchained Cap, that's good stuff. Uh, Xverse, this is, a, this is an ordinals wallet. Okay. That, that's all that is. It's just an ordinals wallet. Next, we are going to look at the BTC Frontier Fund. Now, you guys may know this account on Twitter. Okay, this is the Trevor, uh, Trevor Owens is the Trevor BTC account. Uh, account, the, the account that uh, puts out tweets like this. Bitcoin needs ordinals to become adopted as payments technology. What? So are we suggesting that somehow JPEGs that people don't own is what pushed payment technology on the internet? Is that, is that really what we're, what we're assuming? Never forget that PayPal needed eBay for the same thing. That's not true at all. That is not true at all. PayPal was spun out from eBay. This is really pathetic when people do not know the history of things and then try to rewrite history in order to push their narrative. Okay. Th just this tweet alone should tell you everything. <laughs> Anyways, and guess what? And guess what got eBay off the ground? Buying and selling collectibles. Yeah, it's a marketplace of real collectibles, actual collectibles that people own, right? When I, when I buy a collectible and I put it in my closet, okay, or I put it in my special little office with the rest of my collectibles, I own that collectible. You don't, you don't get to take that collectible home with you and have the exact same one, which is the total difference between these shitcoin JPEGs right? Everybody can have the exact same quality with the exact same image. And really at the end of the day, that's all you care about. Um, anyways. Okay. So that's right. Okay. So just keep in mind this BTC frontier fund. Okay. Is coming to you by a person who believes that you need garbage JPEGs in order to further payment technology. I want you to really think about that. And let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at uh, who's been helping uh, Trevor out. Oh, look at that! We've got all the winners from the uh, from the Ordinal space. Look at that! You got Udi, you got Leonidas, you got Domo. This is this is fantastic. This is fantastic. This is actually disappointing. Uh, CB Spears he actually used to be a pretty solid Bitcoiner. I remember talking to him like three years ago, and he just came a total shitcoiner. So that that that's kind of too bad. Um, yeah. This is, uh, this is pretty brutal. This is pretty brutal. Anyways. Yeah. Ragnar. Ragnar's another funny one, right? That always thinks that, uh, if you're not doing what he says, then you're doing Bitcoin wrong. And again, I, I just want to point out, I don't care if you buy these JPEGs. I don't give a shit. Okay. If you decide that you want to collect things, I like to collect, I like to collect toys and, uh, different, you know, collectibles from the eighties and nineties. Okay. 
I don't, I just don't, I, I'm just not shilling them as an investment. That's the difference. I'm not trying to create a false narrative to get you to overpay for something that you don't need and that really will never be actually worth anything. Um, so yeah, and let's be honest, there is no nostalgic value behind any of these JPEGs. That's the other truth. Second to last team here, we're going to look at Collider. Okay, this one's maybe not as interesting as the others, but essentially every single thing that they invest in, okay, is is Ethereum. It's all Ethereum. Um, every every single thing here is some type of a a DeFi uh, yield generation platform. This is the only one that I found that was really Bitcoin only. But again, I'm you know, I don't know that much about it. It's sovereign. And Sovereign develops a Bitcoin native decentralized trading and lending platform comprehensive suite of the most successful DeFi use cases. Okay, so there is your Bitcoin, quote unquote, Bitcoin only product. And I say that in quotes because we don't really know that uh, entirely. Um, and you also have Start9 Labs. Okay, so you've got two things out of like the 24 that they invest in that are Bitcoin and everything else is total shit coining. Okay, so... These people are not building on Bitcoin, okay? They are not here for Bitcoin. So the last company that Greg outlined uh, that I wanna cover over here is the Geometry Research. All right, so let's take a look at Geometry Research. Here's the co-founder, all right? That's uh, Tom Walton Packock. Tom was co-founder and CEO at Aztec Network, the Ethereum Layer 2. All right, so here we have uh, Shirag, and Shirag's previously adventure investor for Alan Howard's family office across Web3 and FinTech. Now let's take a look at Ying Tong Lei. All right, so Ying Tong, applied cryptographer and researcher, interested in privacy-enhancing protocols and the primitives that enable them. She is a physicist by training, previously contributed to Zcash and Ethereum. Okay, so if you think for a second that ordinals and all of this other crap isn't entirely a uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing, a shitcoin wolf in sheep's clothing, you're you're very much mistaken. I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with this this particular tweet from Daniel Prince. Daniel Prince has an awesome podcast. Let's go let's go take a look over here. Host of the Once Bitten podcast. That's right. Um, and let's see what he had to say here. This, I think, was very interesting. What if one of the investors in Taproot Wizards was backed by someone who advises the Chinese government? So it's not just the shitcoiners. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what uh, let's take a look at what Daniel found. Starkware. Look at that. Is one of the investors. Hmm. That's right, because they, they did get seven, I think they got, what was it, 6.5 or $7.5 million uh, as, a, uh, as an investment? I saw that in uh, TechCrunch, and I believe I covered it a little while back. Anyways, let's dive into it here. One of the early seed investors in Starkware is Hong Fei Da, the founder of NEO. Now, for the people who don't know what NEO is, NEO is a massive shitcoin that blew up like crazy back in the 2017-2018 cycle. I watched this piece of crap go from approximately a dollar and thirteen cents USD to over a hundred and forty dollars. Okay, this was this was insane. Uh, this this actually used to be called Ant Shares. Okay, that, that was the name of the project before they renamed their project to NEO. And essentially, for the people who um, don't know what NEO did, they were like the Chinese Ethereum. And of course, there's, there's no adoption and nobody actually uses this crap. Um, but yeah, they, they were huge. They, 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 were, they were, in terms of the price movements, it was big, right, in 2017, 2018. He invested seed capital alongside the Tezos founder, Arthur Brightman, Another rabbit hole in itself. That's right. Look at that. And here's an awesome piece that ties the Chinese government with the Taproot Wizards. It's great. Because, of course, because of all the investment money, right? Just follow the money. So this is a really interesting little piece. For context, the relationship between NEO and on-chain is that of Ethereum and the, and the enterprise Ethereum. On-chain works on blockchain projects with large enterprises 
and has collaborated with the Chinese government in the past, which ultimately helps the NEO ecosystem. The NEO ecosystem develops the platforms for future blockchain growth in China. Do you really want to be supporting this particular narrative? Do, do you really do you really think it's worth the the minor fucking dollars that that you're gonna get thinking that somehow you're you're gonna you know be able to build your future with stupid JPEGs? Do you really think that doing this on Bitcoin is actually going to help you, right? Help you or even help Bitcoin? So look, um, what are my thoughts? Um, Part of me thinks this is a distraction. Um, part of me thinks that this is a way to force um, Bitcoiners into a specific type of action, right? Get us to implement something specific. Like right now I see, and again, I'm not saying that I am for or against these technologies. I need to learn more about them, okay? But it's kind of like the arguments that we're seeing right now and the push, right? The push for CTV. Okay, and I'm going to eventually do a, a clip about CTV uh, once I have more data and once I can explain it properly. Um, and also, I, I also want to see something I haven't seen yet is a list of the trade offs for CTV. So I know that a lot of us talk about trade offs, right? But I don't think I've actually heard a, a voiced opinion when it comes to the trade offs of implementing CTV. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because. When Taproot came out, I, I remember speaking to a few different devs, and my question is always this, what are the trade-offs? That, that's really it, right? That, that's really all we need to know. And the, one of the issues that we have is, number one, we, we often aren't clear on what the trade-offs are. And the other piece to this, which you, you cannot blame anyone because it is a black box within a black box, it is unknown unknowns which is you you don't know yet what you don't know because this thing doesn't exist in its form. So sure, you can extrapolate certain information, but you don't know necessarily what's going to happen. Anyways, this, this whole entire roundabout thing, okay, this whole entire roundabout conversation to say, I definitely think that this is an attack on Bitcoin, not CTV. I'm talking about that haven't made that opinion yet. I'm I'm talking about ordinals, okay? And it's not because of the JPEGs. I don't give a shit about your JPEGs. I don't care about your inscriptions. I don't care about that. The only thing I care about is who is funding these efforts. That's all that matters. And what I said at the beginning, the shitcoiners, they always want to drag you into a nuanced conversation, Okay. And the reason why they want to drag you into a nuanced conversation is because there they can skirt around reality. Okay. And essentially create narratives that sound like they could be plausible. But you see, if you don't, if you don't let them drag you into the woods, okay, with that bullshit and you just stay at a high level and remember, Hey, this is who is funding you. It doesn't matter the, the, the nuance to the technology. It is completely irrelevant. OK, because tell me who pays you and I'll tell you who you work for. And I can also tell you who your opinion comes from. So anyways, guys, what do you think about this? I mean, hey, Bitcoin is going to be attacked. I think that this is a weak attack. I, I do think that um, it is making a lot of noise, but I do think it's a weak attack. Let me know what you guys think. Put it in the comments. And guys, this episode, once again, this clip is brought to you by fellow Bitcoiner and pleb, full throttle hodl, reminding you, stay sovereign, go fuck yourself, and have a wonderful day. Catch you all tomorrow.